without further ado, let me present to you our speaker today, Brother Mars Marwiliasos. Thank you very much, Brother Henry C. The not so rich. <laughs> Ave Maria Purissima, sin pecado concebida. Ang sumagot lang yung may edad. <laughs> yung mga bata hindi na alam. That used to be the national greeting of the Philippines. Okay. So today is the feast of the stigmatization of our Seraphic Fathers in Francis. And tomorrow is the feast of Our Lady of Peña, Francia. Pag dumarating na ang September, excited na ang lahat. Dahil per months na. Ilang kembot na lang, Pasko na, may Christmas bonus. <laughs> Pero, ang September kasi, very significant sa ating mga Katoliko kasi Marian Month yan. September 8, birthday ni Mama Mary. September 12, Holy Name of Mary. Tapos, nandiyan pa yung Peña Francia and so on and so forth. But most especially, because this is the start of the apologetic seminar of Defensores today. So, Ang una nating topic is about the church. And this is a fast becoming favorite part or branch of theology, which is ecclesiology, the study of the church. Because there are so many confusions about the church now. There is that much on Christological controversy, who Christ is, except for those who persist in their heresy, like the Iglesia de Cristo and the Jehovah's Witness. But basically, all Christians are now agreed on who Jesus is, that He is truly God and truly man, but one divine person. But when it comes to the issue of the church, there is tremendous debate, even within the Catholic communion itself. Doon po ang problema. I'll give you an example of the prevailing attitude of non-Catholics, especially from the Protestant side of the equation, from the born-again or the evangelicals. And I am sure you are aware of this. Kasi sasabing sa inyo ng kaibigan ninyo, I love Jesus. I don't need a church. Amen? Ganun ang ating narinig. Eh mas maganda kung si pastor ang magsasabi, Oh, and it is Jesus, brother! <laughs> we don't need a church! Diba? Ganun eh. So there is this tendency to dichotomize Jesus from the church. How biblically plausible is that? <coughs> that is not what the Bible says. No. Tingnan ninyo. Sa Biblia, it is a very common theme of Pauline teaching that Jesus is the head of his church. I can cite many verses later. And the church is the body of Christ. Okay. So if you are with Jesus, you must belong to his body, which is the church, para anatomically correct and anatomically perfect. Bahagi ka ng kanyang katawan. Analyze the position of the born-again Christians, of the Baptists and the Evangelicals. They just want to be with the head, not with the body. Ay, ang pangit nun. Mukhang medusa. <laughs> <laughs> Nakita ninyo how grotesque is the theology. If you are going to draw it in its hideousness and ugliness, parang yung mga ahas na naroon sa ulo ni Jesus. But that is not what the Bible teaches. What the Bible teaches is that Jesus is the head and the church is his body. So from that point alone, mukhang merong problema ang understanding ng church outside of the Catholic communion. Kasi sasabihin nila, hindi ito importante. Hindi ito necessary. Excuse me. Excuse me. Jesus, it is clear, founded his church. And Jesus never did anything 
that is not necessary for salvation. Amen? Amen. Lahat ng ginawa ng Panginoong Hesus, kailangan niyan upang tayo ay maligtas. Hindi siya gagawa ng anumang bagay na unnecessary. Dahil ang job description niya is that he is Savior. Whatever he does, whatever he says, these are important for us to be saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yung po ang issue dyan eh. And the church is necessary, is important for salvation because it is part of the gospel itself. Amen? Amen. Sa sabi ng ibang sekta, um, doon lamang po kami sa good news brother, yung, yung uh, gospel, uh, oo, yung gospel na yun, sinasabi, nagtatag si Kristo ng simbahan. Amen? Amen? Kaya, kung bahagi yan ang ibanghelyo, okay, mahalaga yan, importante yan, because the church is part of the kirigma itself. It is part of the gospel message na sa Biblia yan, na sa ibanghelyo yan. And most importantly, the church is necessary for the proclamation of the gospel. For the proclamation of the kirigma. Dahil kung walang simbahan, walang pagpapahayag ng salita ng Diyos. Amen? Amen. Ng ibanghelyo. Mula noon hanggang ngayon. So dito pa ng common sense, you we see how deficient, biblically speaking, is the ecclesiology of non-Catholic. And we will later on find out that the only ecclesiology vision of the church that is consistent with the mind of Christ, that is consistent with the message of the gospel itself, is our understanding of what the church is all about, according to the mind of its founder, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, take a look at this. Many people no, treat the church as though it were a human institution. Kumakapati ko sa Santo Papa, sa Obispo, wakas. Akala ang laki ng ipinuhunan nila sa simbahan. Akala nila eh meron silang prangkisa na iboto kung sino ang Santo Papa. Iba na lang pati ko si ninyo. Alright. Kasi ganun tayo. Um, many analysts would Think of the church as a human institution. Right? But notice that the church defies human categories. You see this, for example, in the coverage on the death of Pope John Paul II. You know? The secular media, ni report lang na namatay ang head ng Catholic Church of a one billion strong organization, and so on and so forth. Pero pag pinanood mong EWTN, Iba. I cannot explain it to myself. Iba ang dating. Dahil alam mo, na hindi lamang ito isang organisasyon ng tao, there is something supernatural about it. Amen? Yes. Because, yung pa lang, our heart tells us that the church did not come from man. It is of divine origin. True, it is composed of human beings, sinful as we are, weak as we are, but the church is divine by its very constitution. That's why people come and go, but the church remains ever stronger, ever glorious, notwithstanding our own sinfulness and weakness. Kaya napaka-importante po alamin kung ano ba talaga ang tunay na iglesia. <laughs> Importante po kasi itinuturo ng Biblia na ang bahay ng Diyos, the house of God, according to 1 Timothy 3.15, is the church, right? Which is the pillar and foundation of truth. So in the New Testament, the house is equivalent to the church. But look at what Psalm 127 verse 1 says. Malibang itayo ng Panginoon ang kanyang bahay, ay walang kabuluhan ang nagsisigawa nito. Unless the Lord builds the house, 
dapat ang Panginoon mismo ang magtatay ng kanyang bahay o ng kanyang iglesia. Otherwise, walang kabuluhan. Sinabi ko, walang kabuluhan. Hindi walang tulugan. May rest in peace. Okay. Now, sisters and brothers, how important is this? If you want to belong no, to a community, to a people, to a family that will lead you to God, that will make you God's own pag-aari ng Diyos, dapat hanapin mo kung ano yung patag ng Diyos mismo. Amen? Amen. Napaka-importante niya. Dito pa na magkakaalaman kung sino ang tunay na iglesia. Tingnan niyo sa fundador. Hindi nakakalasin. Kung sino yung tagapag, tata. Kasi kapag nakita mo, na-trace mo, that a particular church organization ay isang pangkapi ng rehelyon ay tatag ng tao! Ang sa Diyos yan. Amen? Amen. Pag nakita niyo sa Securities and Exchange Commission, ang founder ay Felix Y. Manalo, may automatic na fake ho yan. No? Kapag yung founder niya ay Eliseo Soriano na may Brazilian citizen na, alright, eh hindi po sa Diyos yan. Ganon din po kapag imported galing sa yuta. Si, di ba? Yung mga Mormon. O kaya yung tatag ni Ellen Goldberg. Look at all the denominations now existing. From the time of Martin Luther, these are all man-made institutions. Because you will always go back to a human founder. But when you look at the history of the Catholic Church dispassionately without any bias, even a uh, child of tender years, if you ask them, sino father ng Catholic Church? Si Jesus po. Because there is no human founder. That's why they try to, to link it to Emperor Constantine. Hello? Yung nanay niya, Katoliko na, eh paano pang naging founder si Constantine ng Catholic Church? At nung time na yun, may Santo Papa na po, pinuntahan niya pa si Miltiades at ibinigay niya ang Lateran. Eh paano siya maging founder ng Simbang Katolika? Eh mas nauna na yung mga Santo Papa sa kanya. Di ba? So that's the attempt not to falsify history because gusto nila misery loves company. But that cannot be because the truth of the matter is the Catholic Church and the Catholic Church alone is founded by God Himself in the person of Jesus Christ who is God incarnate. No? Kahit anong encyclopedia ang gamitin, lalabas na lalabas ang katotohanan yan. Patotoo ng tao at patotoo ng Diyos. Okay? And so, Napakaganda ng sinabi, ang nagsalita po dito ay hindi apostol sa Acts chapter 5 verse 35 to 39. Hindi rin mo si San Pablo kung sino man. Ang nagsalita po dito ay isang mudyo. Ang sabi niya, kung ang pasyang ito ay galing sa tao, ito'y mawawasak. Ngunit kapag ito'y galing sa Diyos, ay hindi ito mawawasak. Baka masumpungan mo pang nakikipag-away ka sa Diyos. Ang nagsalita po dyan ay si Gamaliel. Siya po ang professor ni Paul. No? He was the most erudite, the most intelligent rabbi at that time. And you know, what he said proved to be prophetic. Proved to be prophetic because this is validated by history of more than 2,000 years. Hayaan ninyo sila. Sabi ni Gamal yan, sapagkat yun ay kung gawain ng tao, yan po ay mawawasa. Pero kapag yan ay gawain ng Diyos, baka naman kinakalaban na natin ng Diyos, tumigil na kayo. Yan. Totoo po yun. Ah, saan na si Emperor Nero, who wanted to crush the infant church? He is God. Asa na ang Roman Empire na mayagpag for 500 years, pinersecute ang mga Krisyano, pinalapas sa Leon, ginawang sulo sa gabi mas maliwanag pa sa Meralco. Wala na. Wala na ang Roman Empire. Hindi lang wasak, hindi. Wasak na wasak. At ang nakakapagtara, 
The very center of the Roman Empire is the most proud city of all, Rome. Yun ang sentro ng Imperium Romanong Pagano. But the center of the church is also Rome. Mahilig ang Diyos sa poetic justice. Kaya nga very symbolic yung obelisk doon eh. If you to the Vatican, sa, sa gitna na may obelisk. Sabi nung mga sabali sa ating oh, nyo, tandaan ang pagiging pagano. Oh, galing yan sa Egypto, di na sa Roma, talaga sila ang mga pagano. Sabi nung mga sabalista, ang hindi nila nakita yung symbolism nun. The triumph of Christianity over all pagan empires. Kasi galing yan sa Egypt. Nung natalo ng Roman Empire si Cleopatra, no? at saka yung kanyang uh, lover, na si Mark Anthony, dinala yan ng mga Romano sa Roma. Trophy yan eh. Inilagay yan sa Roma para nagpapakita na ang Roma ang pinakamakapangyarihang imperyo sa buong mundo. Nung nawasak ang Roma, dinala ng Papa sa Vatican. Amin na ito! <laughs> Dinagay sa gitna. Ah, pero ang hindi nakikita ng Sabadista, sa pinakatuktok nun ang Cruz at pinagyan sa baba. Christus Vinci, Christus Regna, Christus Emperor, Christendom, the Empire of Christ on Earth. So talagang totoo mo ito. Si Napoleon Bonapat, ang yabang-yabang nung una nung 4-11, nung pinahuli niya si Pope Pius XII na matay in captivity namatay yung papay in captivity. Nung namatay, nagmayabang siya, sabi the last pope of the Catholic Church is dead. There will never be any other pope. Haller, Pak, Ganern. <laughs> Meron pa kami po Francis hanggang ngayon. Diba? So, hindi natapos kay Napoleon Bonaparte because when the pope died, in Benny secretly, the cardinals elected a new pope. Kaya wala sila nung sa Roma, wala yung papal tiara for the coronation, gumawa sila ng papier mache. Nilagyan na lang ng, uh, ng gems nung nag-donate na doon niya. Yun ang ikrinaon doon sa papa. Oh. Kaya yun ang paboritong tiara ng mga popa. Alam niyo kung bakit? Magaang sa ulo. Hindi <laughs> mabigat. Hindi mabigat. So, and that pope that was elected was very benevolent. When Napoleon uh, was a broken man, he was exiled in the island of Elba. He was bringing, you know, help to Napoleon. And he took the family of Napoleon Bonaparte under his protection. Talk about mercy and compassion. Yung biktima ng pagmamalabis, ng pamalaan, ng imperyo, sila yung kumukupok sa pamilya nung na exile na emperor. So that's how the history of the church confirms. Where is Russia now? The former USSR is gone. China, when? May araw ka din. <laughs> <laughs> Walang kumalaban sa Iglesia Katolika na nagiling nakatindi. Alright, next. Ay, ako pa rin. Okay. So now, sisters and brothers, this is the next point, no? The foundation of the church, founded by Christ himself. Sabi niya, I will build my church. And I will explain that later on, no? So, pag sinabi niya, my church, he is claiming possession or ownership over it. Pag-aari yan ng church. At tayo, may kabahagi tayo ng kanyang iglesia ay pag-aari din ng Diyos. Do you know what the word church means? It's English, right? But it is a contraction from the Greek word kuriakon. Kuriakon means the Lord's. The Lord's. Ibig sabihin, pag-aari ng Panginoon. Okay? 
And, you know, in the Bible, there are so many ways on how to call the church. Hindi lamang iglesia ni Cristo. So, di tinawag din siyang Church of God, Church of the Lord. It really doesn't matter how you call it. Because the the real story is, it doesn't change the fact that it belongs to God. However you call it. Iglesia ni Cristo, Iglesia ng Diyos. Eh, tama. Like si Cristo yung Diyos. Hello, Iglesia ni Cristo. Tumigil nga kayo. <laughs> iglesia ng Panginoon. Eh, tama. Like si Cristo ay Panginoon. So, however you call it, the Bible means that it belongs to God. It is the Lord's. It is church. Okay. Next. Sorry. Ah, maraming titulo. Ito po natin, makikita, no? Kasi ang ibang sekta ng reliyon, eh, ang aming iglesyang tunay kapatid. No? Kasi yung pangalan, eh, mababasa sa talataan ng Biblia. Roma, this is a is, this is a is. Manabati ang kayo ng banal na halit. Binabati kayo ng mga iglesia ni Kristo. Ayan, mga kapatid, na ba? Mga Pilipino lang man, basahan ka, nabola, nachi ka. Ayun, sumali na. Sa susunod, sasamba na, upo, siya mo. Tingnan niyo. Hindi po ganun eh. Kasi, si Kristo po, ay hindi niya, pininyag ka ng pangalan ang kanyang simbahan. It is simply his church. There is no need to baptize it with a name. Dahil hindi ko po nahanap sa Security Selection Commission ng Roman Empire ang registration ng simbahan ni Cristo. Alam niya kung bakit? Kasi because the church is higher than any human authority. Amen? Kasi it's from God. Kaya ang sabi nga ni Cristo kay Pilato, lahat ng kapangyarihan ay sa Diyos. Eh si Pilato, kahit ang kapangyarihan niya, hindi naman ang galing sa kanya. Bigay yun ang emperador ng Roma. At lahat ng kapangyarihan ay sa Roma 13 ay galing sa Diyos. Kaya hindi po nagparegister si Kristo sa Roman Empire Securities and Exchange Commission. Wala po akong na-research na gano'n. No? Hindi niya pinangalanan. Bakit? Kasi kapag nag-iisa lang, hindi mo kailangang pangalanan. Tingnan niyo ang mundo. Ilan ang buwan natin? How many moons do we have? One. May pangalan ba ang buwan? Ba't mo papangalanan? Mag-isa lang yan. E di yung Mars, dalawa. E baka doon, i-google ninyo, may pangalan yung bawat buwan sa Mars. Para mag-distinguish. E kay Kristo, ba't niya papangalanan? Nag-iisa lang yun. Ba? So, hindi sumagi sa kanyang isipan. Dahil, ang pangalan ay pwedeng kopyahin. No? Kaya na may katukayo eh. Punta kayo sa NDI, kuha kayo ng fear, at singa natin kung may hit kayo. <laughs> Buti na lang ako, Marwell. Ay, wala akong kahit. Kaya so, dapat unique ang pangalan niyo para pagkuha ng NDI fear. Wala yan. Baka mamaya, adik pala yung apangalan niyo. Paglabas niyo na extrajudicial fear. <laughs> Dito nga sa Green Hills, mag-ikot-ikot kayo. Makikita niyo dyan, akala niyo Levi's, yung pala lives. <laughs> Or yung iba naman, abay mukhang branded talaga. Pero maya-maya, nagtatanggalan na yung stitches. Fake. Pero kapangalan, ganun din ho sa simbahan. Kagaya ni Iglesia ni Cristo, ni Felix Manalo. Para siya'y nakapulot ng panti, sinuod ka niya na. <laughs> Kaya may nakita ng Iglesia ni Cristo sa Biblia, although in reality, wala naman. Alright. So, no proper name has been called, um, but there's no proper name to the church, but throughout history, it has been called to differentiate it from other claimants. So, nag evolve ang pangalan ng simbahan as the need arises. 
but it doesn't change the fact that it belongs to Christ. No? In fact, even the Roman Catholic Church, yung pakalo, hindi naman sa ating nagsimula yan, parinig yan ang mga Anglikano. O tinanggap na lang natin to differentiate us from the other groups claiming to be Catholic. O, oh, and tinanggap, yung Christiano, the word Christian, it was first used pejoratively by the Jews. Nagasunod dyan ng Christo, Christian yan. But the Christians appropriated it because that is the theology of the cross, yung kadustaan ng cross na instrumento ng pagkatalo ay naging instrumento ng pagkapanalo, ng pagwawagi. Ganun ang simbahang katoliko. We are like the phoenix that rise from the ashes. Okay. Basahin mo nga ito kapatid na bien. Pambasag ito. 139, ang versikulo ay 20 ng awit na ganiri po ang ating mababasa. Kapatid, basa. Sapagkat sila'y nangagsalita laban sa iyo ng kasamaan uh -huh. at ginagamit ng iyong mga kaaway ang iyong pangalan. Oh, nakita mo yung gumagamit ang pangalan ng Diyos ay mga kaaway niya. Tingnan nyo, Iglesia ni Cristo. <laughs> United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Iglesia ng Diyos kay Kristo Jesus, Haligi at Suhay ng Katotohanan sa Bansang Pilipinas, Incorporada. Kapasot! <laughs> ano nga po na nyo? Lahat ay nag-iclaim at ginagamit ang pangalan ng Diyos. Pero anong sabi ng Biblia? ginagamit ng aking mga kaaway ang aking pangalan sa walang kabuluhan. Bakit walang kabuluhan? Eh hindi naman ang Diyos ang nagpapag sa kanila. Di ba yung sabi sa Psalm 127 verse 1, malibang ang Panginoon ang nagtayo ay walang kabuluhan ang nagsisigawa nito. Kaya walang kabuluhan ho yun eh ginagamit ng, pang, ng mga kaaway ng Diyos ang pangalan niya. Tingnan mo dito kapatid at yan. Sa 24 ng Mateo, ang versikulo ay 23. Ituloy mo hanggang 25. Pasok, brother Bian. Kung magkagayon, kung may masabi sa inyo sino mang tao, mm -hmm. narito ang Kristo, o nariyan, huwag ninyong paniwalaan. Huwag daw ninyong paniwalaan. Kung may nagsabi sa inyo na narito ang Kristo, huwag ninyong paniwalaan. Kaya pag sinabi, narito sa amin ang Kristo, kaya ang pangalan namin, Iglesia ni Kristo, anong sabi? Huwag ninyong paniwalaan. Bakit daw? Sapagkat may magsisilitaw. May magsisilitaw. Lumitaw niyo na. Ay, oh. Ano sabi? Magsisilitaw ng mga bula ang Kristo. Mga bula ang Kristo meron ho sa Dabao. <laughs> I am the appointed son of God. Nagpahirap pa ng helicopter sa presidential candidate nung nanalo na away-away na sila. Sabi pala away pala itong Kristo ito. <laughs> Sige, tuloy ang basa. Mga bula ang propeta. Mga bula ang propeta. At nagpapakita ng dakilang tanda. Ayun, parang si Surya, nagpapakita ng dakilang tanda. Hindi daw matutulan. O, sige, diretsyo. At mga kababalaghan. Kababalaghan. Tingnan yung Iglesia ni Cristo. Yung kanilang mga kapilya, magiging rocket ship. <laughs> tuloy ang basa. At iniligaw. Iniligaw. Pati ng mga hirang. Ayun, iniligaw ang mga hirang we mislead even the elect. Totoo yun. Maraming mga katoliko ang nayakap, natisot, napunta dun sa mga sultan ng relihiyo. Kasi po, mga kapatid, papaalala ko sa inyo, wala ni isa man sa mga huwan na sekta ang aamin at ipaparehistro ang kanilang pangalan, Iglesia ni Satanas. Totoo. Amen? Amen. Lahat yan gagamitin ang pangalan ng Diyos. Eh, wala naman silang special power of authority na pwede mahal ni Cristo. Okay, next. Next. Kukunin ko lang po. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan. Punta na tayo sa four marks of the church. Di ba pag uh, inaano natin, pag inuusal o inaantang na sino, Constantinopolitan Greek, sige nga brother, 
Kantai natinya Una santang katolikam En apostolikam eklesiam Ayo, no? I believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church. Makinig kayo, nagsisimula pa na po ang topic ko. Kasi ito po ang topic ko, the four marks of the church. Okay? Now, alam mo ninyo, siguro bago sa ating pandinig ito, bago sa pandinig natin ito, kaya mag-focus po kayo. Sasabihin ko po sa inyo, na yung apat na marka na yan, pagkakakilanda, ay nasa isipan ng ating tagapagtatag. Kung isa pa lang. Kasi kung pangalan lang ang ibibigay niya, madaling kopya niya. Ang device, nakokopya yan. Dadagyan mo lang ang pangalan device, device na ba? Hindi. Pero yung pagkakakilan lang yan, nasa speech, nasa time. No? Alam mo, ang teke sa inyo. Pili ko kayo ng Louis Vuitton. Di ba? Mukhang Louis Vuitton. Pero, kasi pangalan niya Louis Vuitton. Pero nandun po yan sa pagkasunod-sunod ng LP, paikot. Kahit hindi ang pangalan ng Louis Vuitton, alam mo na totoong Louis Vuitton niya. Tama? Ganun din po ang simbahan. Kaya sabi ni Chris, sa isip niya, umpisa pa lang, lalagyan ko na ng tatak, itong hahanapin ng tao. That my church shall be one, it must be holy, it must be Catholic, and apostolic. Nakala natin, inimbento ng simbang katoliko. Dahil nung Council of 325, sa Council of Nicaea, at saka sa Council of Constantinople, nung 381, nabuo itong Nicaeanong Constantinopolitan III. Akala eh, 4th century invention, hindi po. It always goes back to the mind of the divine wisdom itself, Jesus Christ. Mahaba ba ito? But I would like Brother Ben to read chapter 16, verse 13 to 19, and let us try to reflect because you know that is the foundational text for the church in the New Testament. At sumagot si Simon Pedro at sinabi. Ikaw ang Kristo, ang anak ba ng Diyos na luway. Verse 13, kapatid. Nang dumating nga si Jesus sa mga sakot na si Cesarea na Filipo, itinanong niya sa kanyang mga alagad na sinasabi, Ano ba ka ang sabi ng mga tao o sino ang anak ng tao? At kanilang sinabi, Anang ilan si Juan Bautista, ang ilan si Elias, at ang mga iba si Jeremias o isa sa mga propeta. Kanyang sinabi sa kanila, Datakwat ano ang sabi ninyo kung sino ako? At sumagot si Simon Pedro at sinabi, Ikaw ang Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos na buhay. At sumagot si Jesus sa kanyang sinabi, Mapalad ka Simon Barhona, sapagkat hindi ipinayag sa iyo ito ng laman at ng dugo, kundi ng aking amang nasa langit. At sinasabi ko naman sa iyo, na ikaw ay Pedro, at sa ibabo ng batong ito, ay ipatayo ko ang aking iglesia, at ang mga pintuan ng hades ay hindi magsisipa na iglaban sa kanya, at ibibigay ko sa iyo ang mga susi ng kaharian ng langit, at anumang iyong talian sa lupa ay tatalian sa langit, at anumang iyong kalagan sa lupa ay kakalagan sa langit. Ayan, mga kapatid kong kristyano. Klarong-klaro, di ba? Doon sa binasa, ang tanong si Jesus sa kanyang maalagay, Who do the people say that I am? Sino ako ayon sa mga tao? Ang daming sagot. Eh, sabi ika, ikaw si Juan Bautista, ikaw si Elias o isa sa mga propeta. Pero sa lahat ng sinabi ng mga tao, walang tama. Amen? Ganon din ang nangyari ngayon. Sa usapin ng pananampalataya at moralidad, ang dami kayong maririnig na mga puro-puro. 
Pero ni isa man dyan, walang tama. Amen? Nagtanong si Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad. But you, kayo na mga alagad ko, who do you say that I am? Ang sumagot, ang spokesperson. Si Pedro Apostol. Ang sabi niya, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. At yun ang tamang sagot. Amen? And Jesus was only concerned with that answer from Peter. Kaya ngayon mga kapatid, in the midst of theological, moral controversies, theologians disagree. Even bishops and priests fight each other. But at the end of the day, if it is Peter that speaks, listen, amen? Because Jesus is only interested in his answer because that is the correct answer. Amen? Amen. And then, anong sinabi ni Cristo? Sabi niya, Blessed are you, Peter, because flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my heavenly Father who is in heaven. So in other words, here we see that Peter enjoys a special charism. It is from on high when he speaks on matters of faith and morals. At that time, it was the identity of Christ that he dogmatically proclaimed. That He is the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And then the Lord proceeded. And I tell you, at sinasabi ko naman sa iyo ngayon na ikaw ay Pedro. At sa bagong ito, itatayo ko ang aking iglesia. At hindi makakapangyayari sa kanyang kaharian ng impyerno. Ibibigay ko sa iyo ngayon ang susi sa langit. Ang kalagan mo sa langit ay kakalagan sa lupa. Ang itali mo sa lupa ay itatali sa langit. Hmm. Mga kapatid, <coughs> have you realized that all these marks of the true church are already found in the intention of Christ the Lord? Remember, hindi niya pa itinatayo ang sima. Sabi niya, I will build my church future. At alam natin, kailan nato tagang simbahan? Pentecost. Pero hindi pa niya naitatatag. Klaro na sa kanya ito at ito lang wala ng iba. Paano ko nasabi yun? Baka sabihin niyo, chinichika ko kayo eh. Uh, abogado yun, sino nga rin yan? Maka-judgmental <laughs> yun naman. <laughs> Simple lang naman ang buhay ko. Nagmahal, nasaktan, nagpapugado. <laughs> At nyo, binubola ko may video. Papakita ko po sa inyo. Unang marga. One. Sisters and brothers, because there's only one God, and God is truth, and there can only be one truth. So the unity of the church originates from the unity of God Himself. No? The unity of the three person God. There's only one God, there must be only one church. And there's only one Lord, Jesus Christ. Kaya nung nagtapag siya ng Iglesia, ang sabi niya sa Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church. Singular. Amen? Hindi niya sinabi, I will build my churches. So yung pagkakaroon ng iba-ibang sekta ng relihiyong kristyano ay taliwas sa kalooban ng Panginoong Yeso Cristo. Amen? In fact, that is the greatest scandal of all. Not the sexual abuse scandal of the clergy because there has always been sexual scandals across history. The greatest scandal of all is that we Christians cannot be united in our common witness to the Muslims, to the pagans. Kaya, yun ang problema ng evangelization. We cannot put our act together because of reformation and its aftermath. No? 
that the body of Christ has been torn to peace and pieces. I will build my church. That is a categorical proclamation. So the church, by the intention of the founder, is one. The church is holy because the founder is holy because he is God himself. The fountain of all holiness. We are not holy in ourselves. We are only holy by participation in the holiness of God. And you call that participation in the holiness of God sanctifying the grace, the life of God in our soul. Because Jesus has been pleased to engraft us into himself by making us his body. Then lahat ng kabanalan, lahat ng biyaya ay nagmumula sa ulo. At yan ay si Cristo. Dumadaloy papunta sa katawan ay yung mga miyembro ng kanyang iglesia. At ang mahal na Birheng Maria ay ang liig dahil siya ang mediatrix of all graces. You see how it is anatomically perfect, no? that symbolism of the church. So, kung ano man ang kabanalan na meron tayo, ayan ay dahil sa Panginoong Heso Cristo. Pero teka muna, marami sa mga katoliko ang makasalanan. Totoo yun, dahil ang simbahan ay hindi para sa mga ligtas. Ito ay para sa mga may sakit. Ito ay para sa mga nangangailangan ng kaligtasan. It is a hospital. Amen? Sabi po ng Iglesia ni Cristo, eh mga katoliko, mga nginidong yan. Mga mga nganunya yan. As if naman si Lowell na. <laughs> diba? Yung iba namang sex na, oh, we are saved because we accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Kami ligtas na. Pero anong sabi ni Kristo? Yung mga magagaling, yung mga walang karamdaman, ay hindi nangangailangan ng doktor. Kundi yung mga may sakit. Yung mga kapatid, in the church, we all acknowledge our weakness before God. That every day of our lives, we are always in need of His mercy and grace. That's why Jesus is here. That's why the Divine Physician is here. Because there are so many of us who are sick, who is in need of receiving now. Amen? Amen. And you judge the holiness of the church not by the sins of its members who cannot live up to the exacting standards of our moral values. Napakataas po ng moralidad ng Santa Iglesia Catolica. Pero nun ka, kahit hindi na aabot ng nakararami hindi natin ibinababa ang ating standard. Yung ibang sekta ng religion, dahil hindi makapagbigit, hinayaan na ang contraception. Yung ibang sekta ng religion, dahil hindi na nila maayos ang usok sa pamilya, hinayaan na ang diborsyo. Hinayaan na ang abortion ng pagkitil ng buhay. Pero ang Iglesia Katolika, kahit kailan, ay hindi po natin isusuko ang laban. That's the holiness of the church. It's holy doctrine. And we judge the church holiness not by the by the example of the sinful of the sinners among us because they the sinners are those who are not the exhibit A of the church. Sila yung hindi sumunod. Kaya kailangan kusgahan base doon sa mga tumalima sa kautusan ng simbahan. Look at Mother Teresa of Calcutta. That is the mercy of God in action. Yung mga mababango, yung mga marurumi, yung mga inupuo, yung mga nakalimutan na ng lipunan, yung mga nasa periphery, sila yung pinupuntahan. Kaya hanggang ngayon po, naghahanap ako ng isang ministro ng Iglesia ni Cristo na naka-coat and tie na pupunta sa Calcutta at mamumulot ng mga inupuo at mababango yung mga tao. Wala pa po ako na. Wala rin ako akong nakitang nakabarong na born again pastor na pupunta sa payatas para magpakain sa mga mahihirap. Hindi po sila pupunta doon. Walang koneksyon doon. <laughs> Off the record yan. Yeah. Okay. Diba? You get what I mean? 
you judge the holiness of the church by the standard that these holy men and women has achieved by the power of God's grace. No? Kaya kailangan po talagang um, we study the lives of saints because their life is a commentary on the gospel. It is an explanation of how the gospel can be translated in day-to-day -day life. And have friends with saints because it pays off friends in high places. Amen? And please, tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. No? Kung di po ito ka sa santo, gayahin mo ang kanilang kabanalan ayon sa inyong concrete and historic situation. So the church is holy because the founder is holy. Pero anong ginawa ni Cristo? Sabi niya kay Apostol Pedro, Blessed are you, Peter. Beatus es Petrus. Si Pedro, alam niyo, makasalanan siya. Di ba, nung una silang nagkita ni Cristo, ang sabi niya, matapos na maghimala si Cristo doon sa karagatan na maraming nahuling isa, anong sabi ni Pedro? Depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. Pero anong sinabi ni Cristo doon sa Matthew chapter 16, 18? Blessed are you. Because the Lord continues to bestow blessed things. Amen? Amen. Now, why holy Catholic? Eh, bakit Catholic? Kasi sa verse 19, ang sabi niya, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Ang jurisdiction ng simbahan ay heaven and earth. Now you tell me. What can be more universal than that? Di ba universal? Meron bang nasa labas ang langit at lupa? Wala. So the church is Catholic because it is all-encompassing. The reality of the church is that it is not only limited here, but even eternity. Kaya nga may three components. My church, triumphant. Ah, nasa heaven na yun. My church, suffering, sa purgatory, nag-iintay lang yun, na sa ano na sila, anti-chamber na sila eh. Tapos, the church, um, militant here on earth. No? So, talagang doon mo makikita that the church from the mind of Jesus is universal because it encompasses heaven and earth. What can be more Catholic than that? What can be more universal than that? Kaya nga sa Great Commission, Sa Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, kapag inabiyan, pakibasa nga ako. Verse 19 to 20. Dahil dito, magsiyaon na kayo at gawin ninyong mga alagad ang lahat ng mga bansa. Gawin alagad ang lahat ng mga bansa, patanggapin mo sa kanila si Kristo bilang Panginoon at tagapagligtas. Ganun mga kapatid na susulat. Ay, Sige, basahin na nga lang natin. <laughs> Bautismohan pala para maging alagad. Eh, wala pala dyan, brother, yung tanggapin si Cristo bilang Panginoon na tagapagligtas para maging alagad. Ay, dagdag. Dagdag yun. Okay, kuno yung basa. Bautismohan sa pangalan ng Ama at ng Anak at ng Espiritu Santo. Okay. Na ituro ninyo ituro. sa kanila na kanilang ganapin ang lahat ng mga bagay na inyuutos ko sa inyo at na ako ako'y suma sa inyong palagi hanggang sa katapusan Ayon. ng sakliputan. Alam nyo, that great commission is very Catholic kasi nandiyan ang definition ng pagiging Catholic or universal. Ang sabi, make disciples of all the nations. Universal in terms of geography and race. Ang Iglesia ni Cristo ang ibang sekta ng religion, hanggang ngayon, eh, wala pang naging alagad ng mga bansa. Tingnan yung iglesia ni Cristo. Pilipinas lang, hindi niya pa naging alagad. Oh. Di ba? Yes. Walang isang bansa ang naging alagad nila. Samantala ang iglesia katolika, tupad na tupad na, papunta pa lang yung iglesia ni Cristo, pabalik na tayo, pero hindi tayo nagkasalubong. Kasi ibang daan ang napuntahan nila. Amen? Make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teach them. 
So it must be Catholic in doctrine. Lahat ng itinuro ni Kristo dapat ituro kasama na ang paglaban sa diborsyo at aborsyon at kontrasepsyon at lahat ng mabibigat na doctrinal and moral issues patuloy nating itinuturo kahit na aglahiin tayo at tumayawin ng sansinuko. Totoo naman. And finally, anong sabi dyan? I will be with you always until the end of time. So, ito ay Catholic in time and eternity. Wala pong magaganap na pagtalikod. Wala pong apostasi. Kasi kawawa naman si Kristo. Sabi niya, makakasama ninyo ako. It presupposes na may kasama siya. E paano kung natalikod ang iglesia? Abay, naglalakad si Kristo, mag-isa na lang. <laughs> oh, Madidipit yung kanyang sinabi doon sa Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. So, hindi po matatalikod ang iglesia. Mananatiling buhay magpakailanman. Then makakasama ninyo, sabi, ako hanggang katapusan ng mundo. So Jesus there is still Emmanuel, God with us. No? And then, apostolic. Bakit apostolic? Pag sinabi kong apostol, anong ibig sabihin ng apostol? Sen. Sinugo. Okay? Alam nyo, there's only one apostle of the Father. Yan ay si Kristo. So our founder is himself the only apostle of the Father. Nag-iisang sinugo ng Ama. Yung nagpapakilalang sugo rin siya noong 1914. Peke na mo yun. <laughs> He need not apply. Hindi na kailang mag-apply dahil peke na ho ang posisyon. Okay? Jesus is the one apostle of the Father. Nung nagtapad siya ng simbahan, pinili niya si Apostol Pedro, the chief of the apostles. At kasama ni Pedro, yung labing isa pang mga apostol. Kaya the church is truly apostolic. At lahat tayo ay may apostolic mandate. That the church will continue to be missionary until the end of time. Kaya ito, apologetics, this is part actually of the new evangelization. Yung mga dating katoliko o katolikong lami, katolikong pahaw, doon naman tayo. Hindi na natin kaya pumunta sa Eritrea, sa Estonia, sa Bosnia, Herzegovina, o kaya sa Syria, sa bahay nyo na, sa kapipahay nyo, sa eskwilahan nyo, sa inyong tangkapan. Meron kayong dapat na evangelize because the apostolic mandate to do apostolate and missionary work is a perpetual uh, mission of the church. Okay? So, klaro, no? Hindi pala natin ito hinabi sa hangin na discern lang na naroon sa kalooban ni Christo. But hindi tinuturo yan ng ibang sekta? Kasi hindi nila na-discern. Then hindi sila ang tunay na asawa ng Panginoon. The church is the bride of Christ. It's only the bride that recognizes the voice of the bridegroom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yung iba, kapit, kaya maingay. Kapit ng bumay na iglesia! Excuse me. Well, ayaw ka na magsalita, baka magsabing un-ecumenical. <laughs> There's no ecumenism with the INC, by the way, because they are not Christians. Okay, next slide, please. Ay, ako pala. Ayun na! Okay, eto naman. Yung sa Matthew, yun ay pangako na tupad yan sa Pentecost. No? Ang galing ng Panginoon eh, walang pangako na napapako. Lahat ng sinabi niya, abay tinupad niya nung kanya nang itinatag ang iglesia. Ang iglesia isa. No? Tingnan niyo sa chapter 2 verse 1 ng gawa. At Nang dumating nga ang araw ng Pentecoste, silang lahat ay nangagkakatipon sa isang dako. And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. No? Sa Acts chapter 1 verse 14, 
ang mga ito'y nagsisipanatiling matibay na nangagkakaisa sa pananalangin na kasamang mga babae at si Maria na ina ni Jesus. They are all of one accord. Nakasakay sila sa isang Honda Accord. Okay. So one, nakita niyo yung fulfillment, pinangako niya, tinupad niya. Walang ibang grupo ng mga apostol na eh. Isa lang ang nucleus ng simbahan. Alright. Tapos, holy. Ang holiness, Christodia ng Espiritu Santo. Paano ibinigay ng Panginoon? Sa so verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Napos po sila ng Espiritu Santo. The Holy Spirit makes them holy. Verse 17. Anong nangyari sa verse 17? And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Sinasabi dito, hindi lamang sa mga apostol na naroon. Ang sinasabi, and it shall come to pass. Mangyayari pa rin. Hanggang sa kahuli-huliang panahon. Hanggang sa mga huling araw. You see? Hindi natapos sa Pentecost patuloy. Until the last days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. And that happens in baptism. Amen? That happens in confirmation, in the sacrament, in the special gifts of the Holy Spirit, the various charisms to make us holy. Okay? Verse 38, meron pa rin sinabi dito, And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the Holy Spirit unto na agad yung repentance, faith, and baptism, sacrament. And you will receive the Holy Spirit. Don't you notice, from its very beginning, from its nucleus, it smells and sounds Catholic already to me. Diba? So what else is you? Okay? And in verse 47, ang sabi, Praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily those that are being saved. Tinadagdagan no? araw-araw ang iglesia ng mga naliligtas. Amen? So yan po, the holiness is there. Yeah? At hindi magbabago yan. Catholic. Tingnan nyo sa Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Ang sabi, You shall receive power from on high after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Di ba very Catholic yun? Jerusalem, Samaria, even to the ends of the earth. Sila, ngayon pa lang nagsisimula. Yung malawakang pamamahayag ng iglesia, kailangan natin bumawi, lugi na tayo. <laughs> Di ba? Talagang puspusa lang kanya, ngayon pa lang, Johnny come lately. Pero ang tunay, noon pa nagsimula until the ends of the earth. Verse, chapter 2, verse 5, ang sabi dito, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Ang ganda. Dahil nung pagdating ng Pentecost is represented ang lahat ng tao, sinasabi sa episode na ito, sa tagpong ito, ito yung nucleus sa simula pa ng universal na tayo. At hindi yan magbabago. No? And then, ang sabi sa Babasahin ko po ng mahaba. Ikaw na lang, kapatid na biyan. Ako na ang preacher. Kapag pagkabasa. Ano <laughs> kaya ba dito? Sige, chapter 2. Simulan mo. Verse 5 to 11. May mga nasisitahan nga sa Jerusalem ng mga mundo, mga lalaking religyoso na buhat sa bawat bansa sa ilalim ng langit. Mm -hmm. At nang marinig ang ubong na ito ay nangatiti po ng mga karamihan at nangamaang sapagkat sa kanila'y narinig ng bawat isa na kinasalita 
ang kanyang sariling wika. Mm. At silang lahat ay nagtaka at nags- nagsipanggilala sa nagsasabi, Narito, hindi ba ang mga galilay yung lahat ang mga nagsisipagsalitang ito? Mm-hmm. At bakit nga naririnig ng bawat isa sa atin ang ating sariling wikang kinalimutan? Mm-hmm. Tayong mga parto, parto. At, at mga medo, medo. at mga elamita, elamita, at ang nangananahan sa Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia. sa Udeya, Udeya. at sa Kapadosya. Kapad- um, Miss Universe ba ito? <laughs> <laughs> at sa Ponto, Ponto, at sa Asia, Asia. sa Frigia, Frigia. Pamphilia. Pamphilia, at sa Egypto, Egypto. at sa mga sapot ng Libya, Libya. na karatig ng Sirene. Sir- Sir- at mga nakikipamayang galing sa Roma. Sa Roma! Mga Hudyo. Mga Hudyo. At ngayon din naman ng mga Hudyo. Ayun. Narinig niyo yun? Nag-roll call parang production number ng Miss You. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Parade of Nations! Di ba? Yung mga bansang yun na napanggit, these were the provinces of the Roman Empire, which at the time was the known world. Kasi di pa na discover ang China, <laughs> yung India, yung Pilipinas. Yun lang na Roman era. Yung na-discover lang ni Alexander the Great. Yun lang ang known world. So yung proclamation ng Kerigma, ng magandang balita na nakinig sa mga apostol, lalo na kay Pedro, represented na lahat ng mga bansa. Kaya umpisa pa lang, ang simbahan ay Catholic na hindi nagiging Catholic, but from the beginning, universal na agad siya. Lalo na yung proclamation ng Evangelio sa lahat ng mga bansa. Alright? And in verse 39, it says here, okay, sapagkat sa inyo ang pangako at sa inyong mga anak sa lahat ng nangasa malayo, maging ilan man ang tawagin ng Panginoon nating Diyos sa Kanya. So, hindi nilimitan sa mga naroon sa inyong mga anak at sa kanilang magiging anak. Ibig sabihin sa mga susunod na salitay, yung mga naririto, pati yung mga nasa malayo. Amen? Amen. Apostolic. Sa Acts 1.13, okay, alam naman natin ang Pentecost, lumukob ang Espiritu Santo sa mga apostol. Basahin mo kapatid na bien. At nang sila'y magsipasok sa bayan, ay nagsiakyan sila sa silid sa itaas mm-hmm. at kinatitirhan nila Pedro at ni Juan at ni Santiago at ni Andres, ni Felipe at ni Tomas, ni Bartolome at ni Mateo, ni Santiago na anak ni Alteo, at ni Simong Matikap at ni Judas na anak ni Santiago. Okay, yun yung mga remaining apostles. Kaya, yung simbahan, umpisa pa lang apostolic na. Ganun din sa chapter 2 verse 1, no? Dumating ang araw ng Pentecost, silang lahat ay nagkakatipon sa isang dako, yung mga apostol. Sa verse 14 ng Acts 1, kasama ang mahal na Birheng Maria. No? So, kung ako magdadagdag dito, siguro dadagdagan ko ng isang footnote, the true church is Maria. From beginning to end. Dahil ang tunay na iglesia ay nagsisipa na langit kasama si Maria na ina ni Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, next slide please. Okay. Ito na lang. Pasadahan na lang natin yung mga verses na to, no? Okay. Next. Ito yung mga supporting ano na lang yan. Verses, alright? Okay. Okay. So, sa oneness ng simbahan, dito natin nakita na mayroong visible bonds of communion. Sa protestante, invisible church. So, walang visible fan. No? So, lahat daw na naniniwala kayo, hey, so, we belong to one church. But that is not the way the Bible is revealing what the church looks like. The church is visible. Dahil kita mo na may unity of doctrine. May isang tagapagsalita. Kung walang unity of doctrine, hindi labo-labo sana yung mga apostol. O kanya-kanya sila, pero hindi eh may tagapagsalita. No? Or kung sila man ay hindi nagkakaunawaan, merong nagsisettle, may nagsasalita for them. No? Okay. May unity of authority. Kahit sa Apostle Pablo, kilala niya ang otoridad ni Pedro, pumunta siya. Di ba? Alright. Si San Juan, do- 
doon sa sepulcher, mas mabilis siyang tumakod ay mas pataba-ta. Pero hindi agad pumasok. Inintay si Pedro na ang bagan-bagan from Portugal. Alright. May unity of organization. Nakita ninyo, sila lang yun eh. May mga apostol lang yun eh. May organisasyon. Okay? May sacrament. Isa sa mga nabanggit ko kanina, yung bautismo. Bakit yung mga protestant, hindi mag-agree on what is the nature of baptism? Di ba? On the nature of the Lord's Supper. When it comes to the issue of sacraments, they are so divided. But we Catholics, we know, seven sacraments yan, period. Alright? Unity of worship, may pananambahan, may liturgia. No? May liturgia. Sa kanila, ibang-ibang klase. Merong mga Pentecostal type of worship. Meron namang very liturgical churches like the Anglicans and the Lutherans and the Methodists. Meron namang uh, very rigid. Ama, nagpapasalamat kami sa iyo at kami ginawa mong mga iglesia. Opo, siya ka. At hindi mo kami ginawa ang mga katolikong pampalasa ng oh, Diyos. Opo, siya ka. Nagdadasal ka na lang, nagpaparinig ka ba? <laughs> Grabe ka makapangbash. <laughs> May unity of priesthood. Si Cristo, sa mga kay Pedro, sa mga apostol, sa mga presbyter, etc. Klarong-klaro yan sa New Testament. Hindi lahat. Bagamat meron tayong common priesthood of all the baptized, pero may nagpe-perform ng sanctifying function, ng governing function, at ano ba yung isa ka doon? Eh? Sanctifying teaching function. O, hindi lahat teacher. O, so doon mo makita na hierarchically constituted na at may kanya-kanya silang kapangyarihan ayon sa kagustuhan ng Panginoon Heso Kristo. Talagang visible bands of communion. Outside the Catholic Church, abay, ang gulo. Yung Methodist, yung Baptist ayaw magpinyag ng sanggol. Yung Lutheran nagkikinig ng sanggol. Akala ko ba parehas kayong church? Pag hindi kayo mag-agree. Parang awa nyo na. <laughs> okay. But where is this unity coming from? From the Holy Spirit. Again, don't get me wrong here. When I say unity, I don't mean uniformity. But there is unity amidst diversity. No? Because different gifts but one spirit. No? All right. The Eucharist is the sacrament of this unity. A close communion tayo. No? It is the Eucharist that makes us the church. And the church is precisely because of the Eucharist. Okay? Sa kanila, Pwede ko, kung, ayaw, kung gusto mong kumain ng fita, punta ka doon sa born again. No? Makinong ka ng Judeb. <laughs> so ayaw mo na doon, kaya free church ka, ng denominational, punta ka naman sa Methodist. So, ganun sila eh. Pero hindi ganun yun eh. Kasi band of unity ang Eucharist. It's a family meal. Para lamang sa pamilya. Hindi lang pang pamilya, pang sports. Pa. Okay, next slide. Okay. Holy, nabagit ko na yan. Next. Yan yung mga, ito ang ganda nito. Gusto, gusto ko to. Sanctify them in the truth. Ama, pakabanaling mo sila sa katotohanan. Klaro, klaro. Dahil kapag walang katotohanan, walang kabanalan. Amen? Walang kabanalan, walang kaligtasan. Kaya importante ang simbahan dyan. Diba? Because the church is the pillar and foundation of truth that sanctifies, that saves. Next. Okay. Next. That's that explanatory na yan, ano? Pag sila rin sa explanatory, tinatapad na ang speaker. <laughs> Next. Para makita nyo lang. Okay. Yan ang pagkita ko na yan. Okay. Sige pa. Mag-picture, pwede kang humingi ng ano, USB. Copy rin natin. Sige. Okay, apostolic. Ah, sige. Uh, I just would like to, to point this out. Kasi klaro-klaro sa New Testament, lalo na sa Acts of the Apostles, ang 
special role ni Peter. Outside the Catholic communion, nobody exercises that role. So it is not in continuity with the New Testament Church. Ang paging apostolic ng simbahan, although it's not my talk, di ba magpotok sa papacy, eh klarong-klaro naman. Unbroken line of succession. Uh, Your Honor, I have here exhibit A. <laughs> From Peter to Francis. So tayo po yung nakasumpong doon sa pattern ng New Testament leadership in the people of God. Meron isang spokesperson sa mga apostol. Outside the Catholic Church, wala, wala. Si Billy Graham, um, si the Benny Hinn, ang dami-dami nila. No? Pero sa atin, isa lang. Alright, next slide po. Okay, next. Ito yung definition juridical definition ng sima. It is the society of all baptized persons united in the one true faith under the authority of the Pope, the successor of St. Peter. So that is the juridical definition of the church. Okay, next. If we describe it that way, we are talking about the church as a hierarchical organization. Pope, bishops, priests, and laity. So what you see here is that this is an indication that the church is the kingdom of God. The church is not the republic of God. It is a kingdom. Kaya we don't vote on matters of faith and moral. Tatandaan niya. Hindi niyo pwede i-pressure ang simbahan para i-allow ang lalaki at lalaki makasal. That will never happen to or babae babae makasal no kasi the church is not a republic it is a kingdom okay next okay it's so just a juridical organization it is the body of Christ at ang tawag natin yan ay mystical body of Christ and how important is this teaching kasi si Cristo the historical Christ si Cristo na ipinanganak sa Bethlehem nangaral sa Hudeya, pinako sa Cruz, nung siya ay naririto sa lupa, yung mga ginagawa niya ay hindi natapos sa kanya. Dahil ito'y patuloy na gagawin ng kanyang katawang mistiko, the church, until the end of time. Tingnan mo ninyo, si Kristo nung mga panahong yun ay nagpapatawad ng kasalanan. Amen? Anong simbahan ngayon ang nagpapatawad ng kasalanan, I absolve you from sin. The Catholic Church, precisely because we continue to do what Jesus was doing because we are the mystical body of Christ. Okay? Tingnan nyo yung mga pelikulang may exorcism. Kahit Hollywood, hindi kumukuha ng bidang Baptist pastor. Daging pare ang bida sa exorcist. Kasi din na blero, umangat, angat. Pare pa rin. Alright. Bakit? Kasi si Cristo nagpapalayas ng demonyo. Ang simbahan ngayon ay ginagawa pa rin niya. Nagpapalayas ng demonyo. I am tempted to go in front of the central of the Ignatian Cristo. Magdala ng Cruz. <laughs> Exhortikando te imundus espiritus. Kaya lang natakot ako. Baka ako patayin. Sana sumama kayo gawin natin. <laughs> Tapos pag namasaker tayo, ay ang ganda, Saint Marwil and Companion. <laughs> Tapos may dagdag, Ma Virgin and Marwil. <laughs> okay. Ayan na. So, tandaan nyo yan. Hanggang ngayon, yung love ni Kristo sa mahihirap, kitang-kita sa missionaries of charity, sa mga congregation, sa mga lay organizations, sa mga ordinaryong katoliko. No? Think about it. Whatever Jesus was doing, today, it is His mystical body that continues to do that. Because I am Marian. Not Marian Rivera, may kingdom na yun. Pero, gusto ko lang sabihin sa inyo, 
why is it that there's so much love for the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Catholic Church? Because we are the true church. We are the mystical body of Christ. If Jesus loved his mother, we continue to love his mother because we are his mystical body. His heart beats with that love to us. Lahat ng karisan ng simbahan, nakapoint kay Cristo. The poverty of Christ is the poverty of St. Francis. The preaching of Christ is the preaching of Dominic. The contemplative life of Christ is the contemplative life of the Carmelites. No? So everything that we have in the church is a continuation of Jesus. Okay? Next slide. Okay, okay. Somebody will uh, report on this, on the sacrament. Okay? Next. Nabanggit ko na rin yan, ano, yung ating missionary mandate. Okay? Alright. Ito po ang uh, sabi ng uh, badal na kasulatan. Paborito yan ni Soriano, no? <laughs> It clash among Jones, the transfer has comes, Maligat Zuhay, ng Katoto Han, sa Bensanto Atina, Incorporated. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Gusto ko lang sa lungguhitan yan, mga kapatid. Kasi, may kinalaman yan sa kalooban ng Diyos. Anong kalooban ng Diyos? Basahin mga kapatid na yan. Sa unang Timotio, ang kapitulo ay 2, ang versikulo ay 4. Anong nasusulat? Na siyang may ibig na ang lahat ng mga tao ay mga ligtas. Okay. Ang ibig ng Diyos, lahat ng tao ay maligtas sa paanong pamamaraan. At makaalam ng katotohanan. Makaalam ng katotohanan. Ang ikaliligtas mo, malaman ang katotohanan. Kaya importante ang simbahan dahil yan ang haligi at suhay ng katotohanan. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, next slide. Yeah. Alright. So here, Meron tayong sacred, meron tayong magisi, I think there will be a talk on this, no? but anyway, tuloy ka na, no? Okay, living activity of the church. Pag sinabing uh, sacred tradition, ito talaga yung buhay ng simbahan. The church as church. No? Um, and in the Catholic Church, meron tayong sacred tradition. Ito yung, pag sinabing tradition, the passing over yung handing over. At yan ay apostolic tradition. Galing sa mga apostol. Okay? At yan ay nakikita natin sa buhay ng ating simbahan. Across the years, patuloy ang pagpapasapasa ng kapanan uh, ng palataya. Uh, At kasama ng sacred scripture, iisa lang ang source ng teaching authority ng simbahan. Pag tinanong mo ang ibang senta, what is the word of God? Ang sasabihin nila. O nga, the Bible. Pero kapag katoliko, dapat, pag tinanong tayo, what is the word of God? The word of God is not a book. Because, please, don't judge my brother, he's not a book. <laughs> the word of God is not a book. It is a person. Jesus Christ is the word of God in the And our knowledge of Jesus Christ can be found in two modality. If that information is inscripturated or written, that is sacred scripture. The Bible is the word of God insofar as it is the word of God as it is written. But the word of God is also preached orally and handed over no, across centuries. You call that sacred tradition. No? So, they together constitute one single source of authority for the church. And it needs an infallible interpreter which we call as the magisterium authority of the church. Your infallibility will be discussed in the papacy. But I would just like to say that infallibility as a charism belongs to the church. And there are just four organs of infallibility. How does infallibility is operationalized? Of course, 
the most extraordinary of them, so ang pinaka ay ang papal infallibility. Okay? Kung si Soriano yan, mamal infallibility. <laughs> ay, ay, ecumenical. <laughs> okay. The Pope. Or, the ecumenical council together with the Pope and never without the Pope or with the approval of the Pope. So, nakita natin yan, yung ecumenical council with the Pope, Council of Nicaea, Council of Ephesus, no? Pero kung Pope lamang, nakita natin yan sa ineffabilis deus, sa mga legendissimus deus, sa mga dogma, may kinalaman sa ipakulada konsepsyon at asumsyon ng mahal na piling Maria. Okay? Pero hindi lamang yun eh. Actually, tanto pala. Akala ko ako yung pang-apat, hindi pa na. Sorry. <laughs> yung, yung pangatlo is the sense of faith. The census is fidelio. The census fidei. The sense of faith of the faithful. So, ibig sabihin eh, from the highest to the lowest no, of the Christian people, if they believe that one doctrine is infallible, then that must be infallible. Because we are guided by the spiritual truth. And therefore, the sense of faith in a pair. Interestingly, there's one dogma that is unfounded on a papal or ecumenical decree, but only discerned by the Pope and the ecumenical council later on. And that is the perpetual virginity of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is a dogma. Pero pag tinanong kayo, ano bang Saan ba yan? A- anong council ba yan? Sasabihin, Lateran Council, 649 AD. Pero that's not an ecumenical council, di ba Kaloy? That is a synod sa Rome. Pero pag yung Orthodox sinanong mo, sasabihin nila, um, the Council of Constantinople, we have it in 2018. Uh, hindi naman din yun. But it doesn't matter because both the East and the West believes the same to be infallible. So where should this come from? From the sense of faith of the Christian people. Kaya yun yung ikang perpetual virginity kasi hindi mo pa yung masabi kung, kung saan yan dinipay. Pero alam natin, it, both East and West, na yan ay infallible. Okay? So yun po. It needs an infallible authority. Next slide. Okay. Of course, yung obedience no, to the the vicars of Christ. The Pope is the vicar of Christ on earth. But don't forget that the local bishop is also the vicar of Christ for that particular local church. Okay? And the teachings of the church are under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Kasi prinami siya ni Christo sa John 17, I will send the Holy Spirit, He will teach you into all the truth. At very material yan sa Marian Dogmas specifically dahil Lahat mga Krisyano, mag si Martin Luther, sila Calvin, sila so hindi naniniwala na si Mary Mother of God, perpetually virgin, immaculate, di conceived, and assuring to heaven. How come yung mga halikores nila ngayon, yung mga successors nila, hindi na naniniwala? Ibig mong sabihin, for the first 1,500 years, hindi tayo inabayan ng Espiritu Santo. That's blasphemous. No? Alright. And, you know, Extraordinarily, you see this in the College of Bishops, always in the union with the Pope. And the recent manifestation of that was in 1963 to 1965. The Second Ecumenical Council of the Vatican. Okay, next slide. Okay. The kind, ito si Kalo yung expert dito eh. Sam, sam. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You and na tayo. Ayan. Kaya dito, masig gamay mo to. Alam mo, I defer to higher authority. Ikaw na dito, bro. Kasi mas gusto ko makinig sa'yo pagdating sa ganyan. Okay, uh, so, mag-ano lang ako, ha? Sa panod na liyan, substitute ako just for this portion. Ano? Na big, ano naman, na Ano ko completely unexpected, ano ba? Okay. All right, so when we speak of the magisterium, uh, when we use the magisterium, very loose the meaning of our education. It talks about 
the fish house as a whole, we talk in between the hierarchy. When we speak of the magisterium, we're talking about the teaching of him, the need, the authority to proclaim teachings definitively and in a binding manner on all Christians. Pero ang magisterium to, iba't ibang levels. Madalas, ang, ang pinakakilala pinakakilala natin is yung natawag natin na Extraordinary Magisterium. Yung Extraordinary Magisterium manifested yan in two ways. First, when the Pope defines a dogma. When the Pope defines a dogma. The last time that happened was in 1950, Pope, Pope Pius XII, when they defined the dogma of the Assumption. Another level of extraordinary magisterium is when the Pope, when the Pope and the ecumenical council, they define the law. That's the second level. Yung extraordinary magisterium, whether through the Pope alone, of course, in union with the bishops, or the Pope and the bishops together in an ecumenical council, pareho ang authority niya. For example, an ecumenical council defines a dogma hindi na yan mao-overturn ng kahit sino po. But if a pope, even without an ecumenical council, defines a dogma, a future ecumenical council cannot overturn it either. Ang pantay ang authority niya. So, the pope alone, but in communion, of course, the pope alone, in with the bishops in communion with him. The pope alone, but the bishops in communion with him. When he defines a dogma. And when the Pope and the bishops together in ecumenical council they define the kind of dogma, pantaya. Pantaya ang authority ng dogma na lumalabas sa kanilang teaching. Yan ano naman yung ordinary magisterium? Kasi ganyan yan. The Pope and the bishops, they cannot be together in ecumenical council all the time. They have a church to govern in the name of Jesus Christ. They have a church to run in the name of Christ. Diba? Yung every day na yung every day na takbo ng simbahan. Ang Pope din naman, hindi naman siya pwede umupo every single day proclaiming a dogma. Hindi rin pwede yun. Yung ordinary magisterium refers to the way na a teaching becomes accepted by the whole church by dint of its being repeated and taught by the bishops or, or by the entire hierarchy or by the Holy Father. One of the best examples is on contraception. Meron bang dogmatic declaration na masama ang contraception? Wala pa. In the future, pwede magkaroon. Pero because so many popes, hindi yan naman si Paul VI. Paul VI did not invent the ban on contraception in 1968. Okay? Before him, there was Pius XI in Casti Konubi. Before him, the Pius IX, Pius XIII, all the way to the earliest popes, all the way actually to Dita K with its condemnation of abortion. Merong consistent teaching ang mga bishops at ang mga popes through the centuries na mali ang contraception, mali ang abortion. So because they have been teaching this so authoritatively through the centuries, Walang pakialam ang simbahan kung sino man ang nag-oppose dito. It is already accepted teaching. Hindi siya pwedeng, or rather, kailangan siyang tanggapin ng lahat ng mga katoliko. They are bound to already accept it, even though it has not yet been formally defined as a dogma of the church. It's already binding because it's already taught through the ordinary magisterium. You are not a magister, then you day to day na teaching. At pag ang teaching, through the centuries, it, it acquires a very strong authority. Tayo yung immaculate conception, I would like to point out. There's a frequent misunderstanding by many Catholics na. Kasi ang alam natin, it was defined as a dogma in 1864. Ba? It was defined as a dogma in 1864. But that does not mean that until 1853, Catholics were free to believe that Wala ang immaculate conception, na hindi totoo ang immaculate conception. Hundreds of years before 1854, in fact, pwede mo sabihin, no, ah, since the dawn of time in Christianity, yung immaculate conception, 
at least in embryonic form, tinuturo na yan ng ordinary magisterium ng mga bishops sa mga ito. It has already been taught. It has already been taught by the ordinary magisterium. Yung 1854 na nagkaroon ng definition by the extraordinary magisterium, kinonfirm lang for, for once and for all with finality yung tag- matagal lang tinuturo ng ordinary magisterium. So, those are the letters. So, this, this is an important ano, this is an important distinction. Right? Kasi, isang, I, I get the question. Uh, brother, bakit hindi na lang i-define ng simbahang katoliko palagi yung tapat natin paniwalaan by means of extraordinary magisterium? The church theoretically can do that, but it chooses not to for one simple reason. The church is protected from error. But in teaching its doctrines, its dogma, the church is not promised that it will always use the best words, best expressions, best arguments in teaching this topic. Kaya nga tayo, when in theology, we are bound to believe only what is actually taught by the church. Not necessarily yung mga secondary or tertiary arguments na ginagamit ng folks at ng bishops to justify a particular dogma at a particular moment of time. Kaya kailangan natin paniwalaan yung turo, not necessarily yung arguments. Kasi there could be better arguments in the future. A few days ago, you might have heard di ba, na Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI sinabi niya na when Humanae Vitae came out, he was not satisfied with the explanation. He believed in Humanae Vitae, but he was not satisfied with the explanation. The only satisfactory explanation of the Church's teaching against conception, according to Pope Emeritus Benedict, came only with the theology of the body of Pope John Paul II. That was a satisfactory argumentation came out to for Pope Benedict, for Pope Emeritus Benedict. So, dapat natin i-keep in mind the distinction na yun. Kasi the church cannot be sitting down every single day you know, churning out a dogmatic declaration. Masyadong malaking strain sa ating sa ating ano, masyadong malaking strain yun dun sa buong pwede mo sabihin dun sa buong magisterium na si Banak, every single day, kailangan ko lalabas ng automatic declaration. That's not, that's not how the church, that's not how the church operates. Actually, the church, as a general rule, it defines dogmas or uses the extraordinary teaching, the extraordinary magisterium. It invokes the extraordinary magisterium only when the teaching in question is already under sustained attack. As a general rule, as a general rule, kung wala namang extraordinary attacks, hindi mo gagamitin ang extraordinary magisterium. Kung, kung ordinary lang yung, kung baga, kung ordinary or day-to-day criticisms lang natin, there's no need to invoke the extraordinary magisterium. In the same way that it was only in 1930, for example, that Pope Pius, the Pope Pius XI even bothered to come out with an encyclical attacking contraception. Why? What happened? Because in 1930 or 31, the Anglicans had begun to permit contraception. So since until 1930, all of the Catholics, all of the Christians, even the non-Catholics, tanggap nila na masama ang contraception. There was no need to even come out with a, with a doctrinal document saying masama ang contraception kasi it was a given eh. It was given. It was routine na, oh, for all Christians, masama ang contraception. But when the Anglicans broke cracks, Pope Pius XI now had to stand up and to issue an encyclical, ordinary magisterium pa lang yan, ha? In the future, I won't be surprised if a future Pope to finally stifle lahat ng mga dissent against the teaching of the Church of Contraception will finally issue a dogmatic declaration. Who knows? But the extraordinary magisterium is used only in rare and extraordinary circumstances. All the more reason, bakit yung ordinary magisterium, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-disregard. 
because the ordinary magisterium, by definition, is how the church ordinarily teaches. So, uh, potential na ha, medyo uh, unexpected eh. So, hindi <laughs> structured yung so, ano. Hindi so, ano, so, very comprehensive na. Hindi pa siya prepared sa lagay. 